relationship management. Mm-hmm. That's the back to basics that they got to do. They have to understand the omni-channel situation where people are coming in from various different sources and they don't want to restart again. Mm-hmm. And that's happening a lot. So they have to get back to understanding data and relationships. They got to manage the data and lead the people. We need to start onboarding our, our individuals properly, training them properly from the get-go before you they mean, get wait, wait, it. People, process, technology. Yeah. That's, that's what we got to look at. Welcome to the Matador Podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me in another episode of the Matador Buscast. Yes, I said Buscast. We've done podcasts on planes, trains, automobiles, and, and yachts, but we've never done one on a bus. But here we are, NADA 2023, Dallas, Texas. The Big D. Big D, and we are on Big Tex. That's what they call this thing. They call, it, of course, in Texas, that's what they would call it, right? And everything's bigger in Texas. Every, and this is this is the <laughs> largest party bus in the United States, and it shows. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I have an amazing guest with me. All right, I have Mr. Peter with Lion Partnerships. Correct, Peter. What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks. Hey. Thanks for taking the time to join. Thanks for me. having me. Hey, we're gonna have a, we haven't talk everything about automotive. I was thinking like I was like we had such a great chat before we even started hitting record. I was like, why should it hit record? But no, we're gonna have some great, great absolutely. Chats. And I appreciate you coming, totally sure. prepped and ready in, in full the orange. orange attire, man. <laughs> I I am loving it. I love it. It's like you got this pocket square, you, the shirt, shirt the you socks, got the socks, man. Everything. Just, Man after my it heart. Was, um, <laughs> it was one of these who wear who wore it better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll let you guys vote. We'll let you guys vote. Uh, but hey, Peter. Uh, you know, I love kicking off these podcasts with a little bit of an origin story because you know I'm a firm believer that no one just wakes up one day and goes, huh, "Yeah, automotive. That's where I'll spend the rest of my life." Yeah. Um, and yet you've had a heck of a career. So um, let's let's kick it off there. You know, what is the origin story and how you got started in the crazy little world? We call the automotive industry very simple <laughs> when i was a kid i loved cars i was a car guy i could tell you every single car on the road from miles away just by the taillights or the headlights and i knew it was going to be my destiny at 14 i started working in a car lot washing cars 16 i was selling cars to family members 18 i was working at a toyota dealership 22 i was working in europe selling cars and i came back when i was 26 went into the premium business I started BMW, Mercedes, Jaguar, Land Rover, stayed there until the late uh, 2008 when the crash came. I bailed from the industry to go into another industry to support a sport industry of the car industry. But unfortunately, it was swallowed and I had to pivot. And it was a sales oriented uh, consulting company that I built and loved it. And it was the best thing ever. But uh, the travel got to me and the <laughs> business sucked me right back in. And then back out and then today it's because uh of an unfortunate incident with my wife i i learned uh that every vertical in the car industry needs help and uh as a, <laughs> as i we were talking early i said we call it the car business but we forgot the business part of it and we're not doing the proper job 100 percent. look um yeah. the, you, you've definitely seen that you know uh prior to the pandemic but i think we're gonna see even more now since you know we're entering i don't even know what we're calling this yeah. now you know but it's look it, it's the changes in the economy the changes in inventory all right we're, we're coming off three of the most profitable years that we've ever had i mean just ever and oh. i mean it may ever have again i just don't know if we're ever going to be in a position again where we can we're, we were just making that much money on every single model we sold every unit we sold i talked to dealers and they were forexing their gross profit from 2004 and, five i've heard yeah. some even crazier yeah. numbers up there that's right? insane but, and that's dealers that aren't over listing yes yes exactly <laughs> if, that weren't doing that <laughs> that's another topic I yeah into. Oh, stupid it's crazy idea. um anyways though um but now we're getting look it's look, the rings on the wall if you guys want to ignore it or not that's totally your call but look we're, we're getting back to business we're getting yeah. back to the business of selling Absolutely. cars but coming off of three years of really 
you know, outside of, you know, needing a finger to flip on the lights. And yeah. that's about all you needed to do to the sell a car. The mirror test. Yes, the mirror test. <sighs> yeah, okay, I can sell cars today. I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited. I got to be honest with you. I'm actually excited because yeah. I think our industry strives under pressure. Absolutely. And I think some of the best operators in our industry just need a little bit of, like, Compression, sure. yeah, always, just a little. Always bit, right? remain hungry. That was one, one of the things that I was taught. And always, I, you're always. right, and that's what and that, that's what's going to happen. So I'd love to kind of get your take, man, sure. on just you know what, how you kind of see you know the next couple of years kind of evolving for operations. Well, being in the business for as long as I have, I watched the business go from a relationship sell to a transactional sell to a full on hard transactional sell over the last two years. To and the dealerships are that I've talked to are all terrified of what's coming next mm -hmm. because they have to go back to the relationship cell because they're losing 70 to 80 percent of their customers from the purchase just from the purchase experience so they have to re reset reboot redo anything retrain re and and we use the word training and i hate it because mm -hmm. we should be saying re-coach because the people that we hire actually have what it takes so they don't really need to be trained they just need to be coached and leveraged in the in the ways that they're beneficial at and move them in that direction like we all know that a football team has 53 dress players in the nfl yep not all of them can play quarterback <laughs> no, no, no not no. at all there are kickers punt returners there's all kinds of different positions so do you think the coach coaches the punt returner on how to be a quarterback no we he coaches them on how to be a punt returner he gives them the tools necessary to be the best he can be exactly that's what's needed today we need to start onboarding our our individuals properly training them properly from the get-go before you they mean get. Wait, wait a second on board wait yeah onboard. i mean i can't just show them where the keys and the brochures are and then no. just tell them no, that yeah, hey well that's how you we may do. or may not get a commission check next week yeah i can't do that yeah no oh, okay. no we we got to bring them into the business <laughs> properly yeah. slowly and with resolution to understand where they need to be like i don't under i get in fights with dealers all the time about snow shoveling i absolutely hate salespeople <laughs> snow shoveling because you're taking a revenue generator and making them a cost. Yes. And with that, they can't revenue generate for the store when they're outside doing menial labor, which should be done by a, you can go to a job bank and get people. It's all about efficiency. Yeah, it's efficiency. Yep. The modeling of efficiency is wrong. But I, I tell you, the, most of the dealerships I rent to that are, are there they're not running an efficient sales department anyways. Yeah. yeah. All right. So like their team is it's if, if the team wasn't shoveling snow, they'd just be inside around the water cooler or on their phones yeah. drinking some coffee or something like yeah. that. Right. So but but to your point, there are teams that that's not the way. They yeah. Are, all right. They come in. They have sprints. All right. Mm -hmm. From this to from from 10 to one, you're doing nothing but just smile and dialing. Yeah. You know, absolutely. But yes, I would. They're accountable. 100%. Yes, they're accountable. Yes. This is your job. You're accountable to do this mound outbound calls yep. this isn't as many as we want every single day you have put them you in know the... how much of that got turned off over the past years oh. and you know, you know the biggest excuse that drives me nuts is well i don't have any cars what am i going to call them on doesn't matter it doesn't matter we just call them to say hi we just talked about sewell having a, a two and a half year backlog on escalates yes like do you think they're not calling their escalate customers and saying get on the list yep get on the list otherwise you're going to be four years out I'm going to give you a quick example of this. I go squirrel sometimes. So yeah. do yeah, apologize no if I go squirrel. No um, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I uh, I ordered a, a Rivian R1S. Yes. Okay. Um, I ordered an, also an F-150 Lightning. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, guess how many times uh, Ford has contacted me since the time I have put? Uh, Once. Oh. Once. And that was just to confirm that they received my freaking information. <laughs> Okay, guess how many times Rivian has contacted me? Uh, since they're outside the business, probably six. Daily. I get daily messages. They're called the Rivian Stories. And they have taken their network of owners and created kind of their own little social little platform where they get to share stories about their Rivian. Pictures, where they went, trips they took, 
awesome. things that they found, right? Daily. You get daily communications from Rivian Address- and a text message number that if, and I even received the car. It's going to be a year and a half till I actually see the bloody thing, right? Yeah. It, it may be longer. Who knows, right? Yeah. And if I want, I have a number. I should go doop, 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 doop. Someone answers. Unreal. Well, it's addressable content that is specific to you as a, as an individual. For well, it makes to, me feel connected. Yeah. Yeah, you're connected. This isn't rocket science. No. It didn't take... It wasn't no. like... <laughs> it, it, it's like I can show, I can show a dealer... To take a hundred year hundred car year guy yep. to five hundred in four years. Does without taking people off the floor. No. I, I, I totally agree. In fact, actually yeah. I've said this many times as new salespeople ask me, they're like, Hey Jason, what do I do to really make a career out of this? I said I said, you know what? You sell five hundred cars. Five hundred customers. Yeah. That's what you sell. Yep. Then you never take another customer after your after five hundred. What? Yeah. Yes. You never take a new customer after number 500. Yep. They're like, wait, 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 wait. I don't know. I don't understand. I said, because that's, it, you, that's your community. Yes. Those are your peeps. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. You will take that 500 and you will turn it into 1,000, which will then turn into 1,400. Then it'll turn into 1,800 and it'll turn into 2,000. And you will never have to take a fresh up off the floor again. You just need to get to that point. Now, it, look, yeah. it, you don't do 500 units just in one year. It's no, going to take no. you some time to create that community. Yes, absolutely. But that's all you have to do. But you focus on that community yes. and you build from that community. 100%. Because if you look at it, referrals, or sorry, repeat customers close at 70 to 80%. Referrals close at 60 to 70%. Mm-hmm. Appointments close at 50 to 60%. But we're chasing and a fresh up fresh up on the floor is 15 to 20 percent a phone call is 10 to 15 and an internet lead is 5 to 10. so i mean the thing is and you know i so i picked this up actually actually I'll t- it's a funny story how i actually learned this whole 500 model yes it was um <laughs> so salesperson all right had worked at a dealership for so long um they built a glass box around him because yes. he smoked. Okay. But he'd been at the dealership for so long. He always smoked in his office. But as the world started to change around him, they built a glass box. Yeah. They built a glass box with when they remodeled the next yeah. the version of it. Wow. And they put a little and I thought this was insane. So I had to go out and meet this Salzburg. I, I, I needed to know. Why in the world would an owner would go so far to build a glass box around an individual? Like I needed yeah. to know, right? And of course, I did go in there thinking, you know, I, I probably had some pre <laughs> notions of going. Oh, he's going to be like wearing a plaid jacket, the cigar, and yeah. just going to be like. Arr. And sure enough, like the badger. <laughs> yes, I, he was going to be the badger. That is literally what I was picturing in my head. Oh, I'm going to get me one today. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like. But I went in there and I went to meet this guy, and I was like. Before social media and communities were even a thing, he that's what he was executing. Absolutely. Because he, he worked executing. the Rolodex. The, he, he created a community. He has sold cars to kids of their kids now, right? So yep. he sold the first parents. Those parents had kids. He sold them. And some of those kids who now have had kids, he has sold. Yeah. Yeah. We all grew up with that guy. Yeah. That veteran salesman that that's been around for since he hell he knew Henry Ford. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that convinced him that black was a good choice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, no, but no, no. Uh, sorry, I get squirrel. So I went yeah. squirrel. I went no totally squirrel. On that. No but worries. No worries. I'll kind of I'll kind of just reel, reel us back in. Um, but yeah, look, I, I think to be successful, you know, right now with this new year, you, you really need to kind of prepare yourself and Absolutely. what would be some of the things that you would recommend that dealerships need to prepare for right now so first of all i look at it and i've heard for the last three months we got to get back to basics and you and i went <laughs> oh what's basics mean exactly uh, are they are they going the meet and greet the the five point walk around they're doing this no they have to understand the basics of relationship management Mm -hmm. that's the back to basics that they got to do they have to understand 
the omni-channel situation where people are coming in from various different sources and they don't want to restart again. Mm -hmm. And that's happening a lot. So they have to get back to understanding data and relationships. They got to manage the data and lead the people. Like the, that. It's, the, it's very say that, simple. Say that one more time for everybody that's listening again. Manage the data, lead the people. Forget about the results. The results will come. Mm -hmm. The results will look after themselves. If you're doing the job properly and you are actually mentoring and guiding and coaching your staff, they will grow faster than you can ever imagine and they will produce results. It is a proven fact. You don't go into a sales meeting and go, we need 15 cars today. <laughs> Otherwise, we're not going to hit my target and I'm not going to get my bonus. So you assholes better get out there and talk to every single person. Don't let them walk until you you bring them into my office. We're, I think I've worked at that dealership. Yeah. Holy crap, that sounds exactly like the, well, no, the dealer. I have worked there before. Yeah, and, and that's and that's the mentality. They, they, they push the people down and then they expect them to perform. Yes. I always said to my staff, I said, hey, if you're not on your A game, don't come in. <laughs> Just simple as that. I don't want you wasting an opportunity at the dealership ever. No, I want to go back to something you said, and so, uh, sometimes I, I like to find rabbit sure. holes too. So I, yeah. I, I like no, squirrels no, no, and no, rabbit no. holes. This is hey. a, this, everybody. You want to know how to make a podcast? You just yeah. squirrel and rabbit hole it hey. the whole way through. Um, okay, Alice so, in Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said something, and I think I kind of want to elaborate a bit more because sure. I think it's super important. Is um, that getting back to that relationship? Uh, Absolutely, that relationship selling. No. I want to, I think we need to redefine what the definition of the relationship is today, because I think when I started what a relationship is and what the consumer thinks a relationship today can be very, very different things. Like, um, all right, when I, when I started in the business, a relationship was just quickly building as much rapport as humanly possible, right? So I was never a Bears fan, all no. right? Wasn't. Not going to be, in fact, just won't, all right? A lot of right? on you. <laughs> it's true. Then and there I wasn't, all right? <laughs> but... If somebody walked into my dealership wearing a Bears jersey, I sure in the hell knew who Jim who McMahon the top, was. Exactly, I knew who the top players were, and I knew what the score of the last game was. Absolutely. Right? And that, but that's that's how we were taught. We were we were taught to you know kind of find quick and immediate rapport. Now and and that and and that was the the foundational stones for yeah. for creating this relationship so that we, so I can sell to them. I think today kind of go back to like um, I'm going to say the the Rivian example I gave yes. you. All right. I don't know anybody over there. No, I don't, I don't have a name of a single person. I've actually never met anybody in, in, but I tell you right now, I feel like I have a relationship. Absolutely. With this company Con connection. That's right. So that's what I say. I, I think, I think what it is is, it, it, but it's the, it's the experience. And I'll tell you why I feel like I have a relationship with them. I, I feel like I have a relationship to the brand because you know uh, what I am getting as far as content from them, um, is 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 very specific to me, Absolutely. right? So like you know, they had me fill out a form uh, asking me about you know how and how and how and what I plan to do with my Rivian, right? Sure. And I, I I enjoy off roading, I really do. Yep. And they're like, well, what part of the country do you like to off road? And and I'm getting catered content, all right, based on probably however I answered exactly. these questions. So you know, they've taken technology, all right, uh, hyper. Um, hyper specific to me as a user, absolutely right. And but it's it's I feel connected because I feel known, right. So your data in a dealership is the most important thing, and in that data, your CRM, your CRM shouldn't be where you live, what your phone number is, what your email is. That's not what your CRM should be. It should be about the conversations that you've had. It should be what coffee, how you like your coffee. What do you drink? What your kids' names are? What their birthdays are? What sports they play? Everything like that. So you can continue that relationship, that personal relationship, with that customer at all times. And if anyone picks up the information and needs to have a conversation, your service advisor <coughs> knows that. Hey, your kid plays soccer. They're, you're not going to be available on Saturday mornings. Yep. That uh, you got to have that information. That that real one-to-one -one relationship with your customers so that you build that loyalty so you don't experience that 70 to 80 percent loss that every single dealership is affected by today because of the experience that they've had because i can tell you personal experience i'll never return to the dealership that i bought my jeep off of peter yeah. 
I have received more of an experience at a Chick Fil A yeah. than I have <laughs> purchasing a forty thousand dollar car. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's I'm sorry if I just pissed anybody off, but it is legitimately the truth of the matter. You walk out. You know what? How about the how about the going into the restaurant that you've gone gone into? You've had a, had a nice lunch, and the guy comes over and says, I'd "Like to buy you coffee." Yep. Well, yeah, that'd be nice. And, and you walk out. The guy spent a dollar out of his revenue to buy you something to drink that you'll remember for two weeks. And you'll when next time you want to have lunch, you'll go right back to that place. I love that you. I love the fact you brought up the coffee thing because yeah. again, here I am going to go squirrel again on you. Uh, I'm going to tell you a coffee story, right? Sure. Because uh, I think this is something that dealers can actually do. And I, I may have said this in other podcasts, but if you're listening for the first time or watching for the first time, all right. Um, you're going you, what you just said is incredibly important. And look, it's little things uh, that make up the overall experience. Like if Absolutely. you, if, if you read like dealers, if you guys are out there right now, read through your Google reviews, just read the last 10. Yeah. It was not a big thing at all. that gave you a five star. Yeah. It was a little thing that was executed. And then how do you process that? So I'll give you, for example, at my dealership, my salespeople hated me for this, but it took some time, right? You know, that fancy coffee machine that every yeah. single dealership has. Oh, absolutely. I took it out from the front and I put it in the back because I did not want any customer getting their own coffee no so so to your point yeah like it just takes you know a little bit of time right a little bit of time to slow it down just one bit and i also then... i also did something really silly too i actually made myself people pay for the coffee oh no no it was a quarter and but it was it was for me it wasn't it, it i mean, the money just actually went back into whatever the, the, bonus the employee fund yeah. was or whatever yeah. it was but but what what, what what the reason for it is because i wanted them to feel that they are invested into the no, Absolutely. It's a, look it's a quarter it doesn't mean yeah. anything but it's the symbolism of like okay i am this is what i'm gonna do i'm going sure. Sure. to purchase this person hey. a coffee and i'm going to go in the back and and make it the way they want it yeah. and i'm gonna bring it out to a them. vested effort yes and it's like you got to get some skin in the game to understand what this business is all about yeah. like we give salespeople who are commissioned only the best business model in the world yep you don't have to pay for your inventory yeah you don't have to pay for your building you don't have to pay for your advertising your telecommunications <laughs> it, your your support staff you don't have to pay for anything and you know what your margins are mm -hmm. you just have to maintain the gross profit that's it that's it so i don't understand why you just you just need to connect that's yeah. what you need to connect yeah i don't understand why we have a hard time getting the right people in this business yep because you can make a fortune at it if if you do it right it's not hard you get a, a tremendous amount of circle of influence contacts it, it, it'll set you up for the rest of your life like who knew i'd be where i am today <laughs> when i started out washing cars yep it it's i've traveled the world with the car business yeah i've been met incredible people in my in my career i've created some amazing friendships and it's all because of the car business that's the thing. It's the business side of it. And I always looked at it as a business side, not a car lot. Well, and, and yeah. the key to any good business is that connection. Yeah. I mean, just to, you know, it's a, that, that coffee thing, yeah. you would love this. You know, um, my sales team would actually start creating their own little goals. Sure. All right. They'd stick 10 quarters in their pocket. 10. Yeah. Their goal was to have no quarters in their pocket by the end of the day. Great concept. Right. And like, again, this was just little things make monster differences yeah. but it was just connection and business is oh, oh, the best uh, businesses uh, in the world feel make you feel connected absolutely here's another one I, i'm reading a, a book by this australian guy who's selling cars in england it's called words that sell cars and it's i've heard of this one it, it's absolutely hilarious first of all he's australian and he talks in, in an australian <laughs> manner which is hilarious the second part is he's in britain selling cars but i worked over there for four years so i understand all this lingo and he came up with the idea he said hey you made x amount of money each year so if you take your money you take how many cars you sold and how many people you talk to every single person is worth x that you talk to yes your goal is to drive that number up. So, exactly. and so I'd say that goes to, yeah, that, goes to yeah. that model we were talking about yeah. earlier, 500 cars, that's yeah, it. Absolutely. And then you build 
on Absolutely. those relationships. Absolutely. And, and when you do that, you'll find a complete difference, not only in your team, but in the results. Yes. And the customer experience. I don't give a damn about CSI. CSI doesn't mean <laughs> diddly to me. Customer experience means everything to me because customer experience will drive the CSI number. 100%. Yeah. So if you give a great customer experience like you had with Rivian, it, what are you going to say? Are you going you're going to sit there you told me all about it. I would like to look that look at one if I was going to buy another EV, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, okay, this EV does get me going in the morning, right? Yeah. All right. Three rows of seating, full size SUV, yep. 800 horsepower, all right, extreme off road capabilities because yeah. it's four motors. So yeah. all the wheels have all individual yeah. independent oh, yeah. torque, all right. It's got like eight inches of electromagnetic, you know, Lift. suspension. Yeah. yeah, I could jump this thing like oh, a yeah. Raptor if it's I want a, to. Hey, like, you're starting to sound like Tim the Tool Man. I know. Look at my Rivian. Anyways. <laughs> we're regressing we're regressing we're just look this is what happens when you get two good car guys just start talking shit and then we're like yeah so where were we going with this yeah, again well, um, what were we, were we talking about what were we talking about no look look, look it, this is actually perfect because we were getting towards yeah. the tail end yep. of our time today perfect. anyways and but I, th I think we covered some some great topics absolutely about, you know it, it's really uh, getting back to business get yeah, back, back to the basics. basics but what are those basics yeah. okay learn from what we did Yes. And learn where we're going. 100%. And, and, and create and, those relationships. And, and, we, and we create the relationship cell, lose the transactional cell, make sure your people are on board. It's 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 simple. It's I always, no, no, no. I always, it, 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 it's it's simple in in writing. Yeah. OK. Execution. But look, an idea is only as good as how well you can execute it. Absolutely. And, you know, the best operators out there and there's some amazing operators out there. Because I've had an opportunity to interview a lot of them. Yep what they're phenomenal at like what they're really truly phenomenal at is executing yes getting shit done yeah and and you said it people process technology yeah that's that's what we gotta look at if we develop Any our people three pillars of every good we business create the best yeah. process and we use technology to an advantage we are going to become winners 100 yes. percent. it's the best formula out there. yeah absolutely Peter, thank you so much for taking the time hey, to jam with me today. Pleasure. But before I let you go, for everyone out there that's listening and watching right now, and would love to connect with you and learn more sure. about you or follow along yeah, with your journey, absolutely. what's the best way to do so? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. I know Peter Smith is a hard one to find on LinkedIn, <laughs> but it's under Lion Partnership. And my website is www.lionpartnership.com. And you can reach me at peter at lionpartnership.com. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, man. That was so much fun. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to the Matador Podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Be sure to check out the full podcast library at matador.ai to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe.